Welcome back to the show. Uh, yeah, that was uh, quite a big, quite a big stogie or whatever you call them. Um, <laughs> so marijuana is allowed. It's allowed in the 2023 Elders Book. We're going to take a look at that, um, and we're going to take a look at JW Org what it says about marijuana. It's interesting how the organization is making changes. We're going to look at three elders book. We're going to go back to 1991 all the way up to the 2023 elders book. And we're going to look at what it says about marijuana. Interesting. And we're going to look at what the org says about marijuana themselves. So uh, hang on to your pants. It's an exciting evening. We're going to show you that gambling is okay. Drunkardness is okay. You can lie in court, lying, lying in court, it's okay. And you can accept gifts, even Christmas gifts. But you got to be careful how you do that. We're going to cover all of this. So let's start with marijuana. Um, well, first of all, I want to show you what the Bible says about marijuana. Let's just go right into and And they don't show you this on, on JW Org, by the way. They don't use this line of reasoning at all. Um, you're probably asking, well, how, how did I learn this line? Of, well, let, let me show you the line of reasoning first, and I'll tell you where I got it from. Now, I just plugged in here into my Bible tool. What does the Bible really say? Uh, all seeds God gave to man. And it didn't really have a quick answer. This tool will take a few 15 seconds or so to get an answer if it's a new question. And it came up with the right answer. It said, God said in Genesis 1 and 29, Behold, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of the earth, and every tree with the seed is in its fruit. You shall have them for food. So there you go, folks. In one scripture, right off the bat, in the first chapter of Genesis, it says to me that these marijuana seeds are okay. I can use them for food. There is benefit from them. And we find that a lot of seeds all over the earth are used for medicines. A lot of our medicines to this day come from various seeds uh, across the earth. Marijuana is just one of the seeds that they're uh, discovering has some, has some benefits. I did a lot of research on this and I was trying to figure out uh, you know, what to say about it because uh, I'm by no means an expert. But, but here's what I have, just the Google part of it. It says, uh, uh, are cannabis or cannabinoids helpful in treating health conditions? And Google says, drugs containing cannabinoids may be helpful in treating certain rare forms of epilepsy, nausea and vomiting associated with cancer, chemotherapy and loss of appetite, and weight loss associated with HIV, DS, and AIDS. And I went on to look a little further. Uh, patients do, however, report many benefits from uh, insomnia, anxiety, specificity. So I even went further and uh, uh, about uh, did some looking into marijuana, the goods and the bads. It's like anything else. And then I got to this PTSD. That's what a lot of Jehovah's Witnesses have. And this is post-traumatic stress syndrome. In fact, we can go down and, and look at the complex version. That's what we have for sure. And a lot of elders have that. They have to work. So I went on to the uh, um, website just to see what JW Org has to say. So I just plugged in marijuana. And I went to several of the articles here. Marijuana, why the conflicting views. Uh, this was a kind of something from Canada back in the 80s they, they brought up. And it, and it comes down to the bottom line. I'm going to pull that up so you guys can see this. Um, right here, they say it. Make no mistake, marijuana is a drug. As such, like other drugs, it poses a real threat to your health and to your life. And that's kind of how all their articles, like if I was looking on JW Org about marijuana, that's what I'm finding. I go to another article, it's on, on smoking. Is smoking a sin? Let me uh, pull that in so you can see it. This, this here article is smoking a sin, JW Org. Um, you know, it just gives all the love for life, love for neighbor kind of a thing. Does the Bible say anything about recreational use of marijuana or other drugs? And um, they, they throw the word recreational use in there. 
Um, the Bible doesn't mention it, of course. They don't bring up the Genesis scripture that I brought up. They just try to look at all the bad stuff, like they always do. And um, it really shows that you shouldn't be using it. It, it shows that it's, uh, it's, it's something that you should, it's an addictive stuff. It, you shouldn't be using this stuff. It's like tobacco. And this is how they th pitch it in their articles. I even went further, the effects of use of marijuana. And they use this, this Dr. Fran E. Winkler. I even looked him up. And this guy's not even a real like specialist on this stuff. He just wrote an article. It's funny how they will just grab someone that writes a negative article and uh, they'll use it, but yet they won't use the Time Magazine and these guys for anything else. Only when it's in their favor. So, uh, but, so anyways, I wanted to, uh, that was the end of that. The next part that we have here is the Elder's Book. So I'm going to bring up the Elder's Book. Okay, so here's the Elders Book. This is the latest 2023 Elders Book. And it's covered under Chapter 12. Uh, this is where you determine um, whether a judicial committee should be formed in the Elders Book. Now, I also looked this up in three other... This is going back to the 1991 Elders Book right here. And this one says... Uh, where are we? Uh, misuse of... The, right here, right above my head. I can't highlight it, but it says misuse of tobacco or addictive drugs. It refers to some scriptures. Now, these are disfellowshipping offenses. That's how it put it back then. Drunkardness. It was just that easy. That's how they did it. Apostasies in there. A lot of stuff on sexual things. But uh, they called it upholding Jehovah's righteousness. The scriptural, scriptures clearly show that Jehovah forbids these things. You know, so... They always put Jehovah's name in there. So back in 1991, Jehovah f forbids it. Back in 91, um, forbids drugs of any sort right there. If you were caught smoking pot or anything like that, you'd be disfellowshipped back in 91. Okay, we're going to go to 2017. This uh, maybe gives us a little different look on it. Um, uh, mis misuse of addictive drugs. Here's how it puts it. it. Quotes a few scriptures. Please note the use of addictive drugs under medical supervision, such as for pain management, would not necessarily require judicial review. When the questions arise, consult with the branch office. So now, uh, uh, this is the 2017 Elders Book. It's no longer forbidden by Jehovah. You, you can consult the branch. So let's say you had some special medical thing. Let, let's say you, you had epilepsy and the only thing that was going to calm it down was, was uh, CBDs or something. I think that's what they call them. The marijuana uh, oil or whatever. But here, it's, it's not talking about m marijuana at all. In fact, I plugged it in here and I couldn't find marijuana. It just uses the word drugs. And drugs is a big word term. Uh, there's all kinds of medical drugs mind-altering. So, I don't know. That's all it says is drugs. Uh, when the question arises, consult with the branch office. That's, that's how they dealt with it back then. So now we move up to 2023 and we go to chapter 12. Hey, look at that misuse of tobacco or marijuana and abuse of medical. So we click on that section and it pulls us right into a whole section that deals with this. So we can just cover this together here. And uh, okay, so misuse of tobacco or marijuana and abuse of medical, illicit, or addictive drugs. So elders should use good judgment in weighing the circumstances and extent of the wrongdoing so as to determine whether a judicial committee should be formed. For example, one or two elders may handle matters by means of counsel if a Christian abused an addictive drug or smoked cigarettes on one or two occasions and the matter is not widely known. So, um, long as it's kept quiet is what it's saying here. Uh, two elders can handle it by means of counsel. So that seems to be the big thing that, that Jehovah is concerned about is, is this getting out in the public. 
and they're going to talk about this a little further on here. They call it notoriety. So the coordinator of the body of elders should be informed, however, a judicial committee is required for the practice of abusing addictive drugs, including beetle, nut, marijuana, and tobacco. So they're naming it. Now, if the use of marijuana is legal and a medical doctor authorizes and or prescribes marijuana for a medical problem, a Christian may choose, may choose to make use of this form of treatment. Okay, folks, so you, you can use it if your doctor says you can. So here's my, I rolled up a joint here. As you can see, I, I labeled it. Let me see, Did it, is it showing there? Uh, I labeled it marijuana, uh, just so you know. Okay, so here's, when I rolled it out, here's what it's, it is. Long as it's medical marijuana, <laughs> I guess. So that's that's the thing, medical marijuana, that was a poor joke, sorry about that. But anyways, I, it sounded good in my head. <laughs> So medical marijuana, you can use it. You can, if the use of marijuana. So up here, it's funny. Up here, it's evil. But down here, it's okay. You can choose to use it. So I think a lot of do uh, elders uh, are going and uh, now, like 2023, where there's a lot of knowledge now. You see, back in 91, it was evil. Jehovah didn't like it. 2017, it was still evil. Jehovah doesn't like it. The Watchtower, Wake, all the, everything, it's, it's evil. Now in 2023, it's okay. Jehovah changed his mind today. 2023, Jehovah came up with some new rules. It's in the New Elders book. You see, this is the problem, folks. Having a religious organization getting involved in people's medical lives like blood transfusions and all kinds of things. Their, their personal medical lives, their sex lives, everything. This religious organization has so got himself so involved with people's lives that, that now we have problems. They make all these rules back in 1991, and now they have to change the rules. And they blame it all on Jehovah. What well, Jehovah changes how things work. You see, we, call, we all call BS on it. We all know that's nonsense. It's just that this organization is getting involved where they shouldn't be involved. And now they've got to make new rules because uh, they're going to get laughed off the planet if they don't make new rules. You see, if you're allowing doctors to perform bloodless surgery, try new things, then you have to be okay with doctors using marijuana for new kinds of treatments to new kinds of healing. Doctors are doing that today, and they're, and they're finding uh, that they're making all kinds of headway. But here it is. Uh, they, they're going along with it. Uh, if the use of marijuana is legal, and if a medical doctor authorizes or prescribes marijuana for medical problems, a Christian may choose to make use of this form of treatment. Now, you could argue this. If the use of marijuana is legal, stop it right there. So if it's legal in your state, you can use it. Because then it says, and, you see, in the states that it's not legal, uh, there's a medical. I think half of the U.S. states, medically, you can get marijuana. So, and a medical doctor authorizes it or prescribes it. So, it's two, we're talking about two things. So, if it's legal, you can use it. And if a medical doctor authorizes it or prescribes it, uh, you, you, you may choose to make use of this form of treatment. So let's carry on here. If the growing of marijuana is also legal, so if, you, if, if it's legal to grow it in your state, uh, it says a Christian who is using marijuana under a doctor's supervision may decide to grow the drug for his personal use. And folks, all you have to do is go to the doctor and tell him you're a Jehovah's Witness. Go to your, go to your family doctor if, it's, if you can get a medical uh, prescription. And it's really quite easy. I'm a Jehovah's Witness, and, and I, I, I have cognitive dissonance. I have PTSD. I know I do. All elders have it. They all do. The governing body has it. Everyone has it. So everyone could legally get a prescription. That's all they would have to say. I, I, could give, I, I know this for a fact here in Canada that, that that's worked for years. Since, that has worked since 2012, that method. 
you could go to your doctor and get a prescription here in Canada. But now this is just starting in the US, uh, half of the states and other parts of the world. So the Jehovah's Witnesses, because they're so involved in the medical part of a person's life, now they have to make new rules. It's no longer the devil, it's no longer demonized. But you notice they don't use the proper scripture in Genesis where God said, all the seeds are yours. You can use them for food. And that's kind of what marijuana, they're using it as a form of food. You can orally use it nowadays. So you can grow it. So Christians may use it and they can grow it if it's legal. Um, a Christian who is using it under a doctor's supervision may decide to grow the drug for his personal use. So now, or a Christian may decide to grow the drug for someone else in his household who is using it under a doctor's supervision. So if you have a son or a, doc, a daughter or something, maybe they're suffering from epilepsy, uh, you could grow it. You could grow this stuff in your own house. No one, no one can judge you for it. It's right here in the elders book. But you see, folks, you will not find any of this online. JW Org will not, they, they give a different story. They paint a different picture or they haven't updated their policy yet. So they go on and talk here. They say uh, these would be personal decisions. However, it would not be proper for a Christian to use marijuana just to experience euphor euphoria or for him to grow it for others who are not part of his household. So, so they're saying you can't do this for other people. This is for your own people in your own house. Now, if a Christian's medical use of marijuana or the growing of it for his personal medical needs causes a disturbance in the congregation. Now, this is important, folks, because if, if your use of marijuana or the growing of it for personal medical needs causes a disturbance in the congregation, it could be that the Christian would no longer be viewed as exemplary. So you will lose your privileges. So you could be growing marijuana, you keep this all undercover, all quiet. Uh, no one needs to know your business. You're doing, you know, what goes on in your house goes on in your household, right? It's not like you're having your house opened up for service arrangements and they're going to smell marijuana plants growing. You're not going to do that. You, you're going to keep yourselves quite private in the congregation. Grow the marijuana, you have a doctor's certificate. You don't have to advertise this. And, and you do not go and talk, tell your elders, hey, this is what I'm doing. Don't even tell them. You know, you've seen it here in the elders book. You're allowed to do it. The less people that know, the better. Because if you've got some elder that has his nose out of joint, he's going to make it bad for you. And he's going to use this little clause to shut you down. But this shows you in a good conscience, if you're PMO, if you're in, you can, you can uh, grow marijuana. You can use marijuana and you can grow it for personal use. Everyone has PSTD and uh, they need to lighten up. Everyone's angry about something. It's because of all the judging that we've been told to do. So now the proper use of addictive drugs under medical supervision, such as for pain management, would not require a judicial review. And of course, they don't understand the, uh, the, the organization that everyone has cognitive dissonance and PSTD, PTSD or whatever. You know what I mean. So um, they're talking about pain management. And uh, when questions arise, consult with the service department. So all I'm saying is you keep it quiet. You're not going to have any, any issues no one can get disfellowshipped. It's right here. It's in the elders book. It even tells you you can grow it. Next. Next, we're looking at um, uh, the growing is different from a farmer. So now let's say you're a farmer and you want to grow marijuana. You want to get into the marijuana business. You see, Watchtower is even getting into your farming business. They're telling you what you can use your land for and what you cannot use your land for. Let's say I have a bunch of land here and, and, and the, the uh, 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 marijuana provider wants to grow some marijuana on my property. Watchtower says I can't do that. Uh, here's what it says. It says the growing of marijuana is different from a farmer who grows industrial hemp, which is related to marijuana, but is used for other commercial products and contains very little of the compound 
that uh, produces euphoric effects. Growing hemp is a personal decision. You see, they're saying growing marijuana is different. They're, they're not saying you can do it for commercial reasons. Hemp is, uh, they, uh, is like marijuana, but it doesn't have the effects. They use it for making ropes. In the olden days, they grew lots of hemp. They probably grew, grew lots of marijuana too. So uh, anyways, that's all it has on marijuana. That's what you're going to see in the Elder's Book. And now we're going to go back to the studio here and look at the next one, gambling. So let's go to the Elder's Book and see what it says about gambling. Okay, so the next one is gambling. And uh, we're going to go right in, back into the Elder's Book. Now, here's the uh, Elder's Book from, uh, let me see, I've got it right there. This is the 1991 Elder's Book, and it's right uh, here. Greed, gambling, uh, let me get that up higher right here. Greed, gambling, extortion, they just threw a couple of scriptures. They, they put it all together, it's that easy. They left a lot up to the elders, and they just named gambling. You can, get, you can be disfellowship for it. Then uh, in uh, 1990 or 2017, they had a little section on it, section 30 here, greed and gambling and extortion. It says Christians should avoid gambling in all of its various forms, including lotteries. So they don't want you buying lottery tickets. And if a person makes a practice of gambling and after repeated counsel, unrepentantly pursues a course of greediness, which they call gambling. Let's say you like going to bingos just for entertainment or something. You know, in 2017, judicial action would be appropriate. So now, uh, does it change? Let's go all the way up to, uh, I'm going to pull this one in as close as I can for you. This is the 2023 Elders Book. And uh, there's a section for it, Greed. It's like the other one, Gambling. It says, Elders do not generally involve themselves in what an individual does with regard to petty gambling and solely for entertainment. So petty gambling and soul, solely for entertainment. So here's your uh, window, folks. If you like to go to Vegas, long as you do it with uh, entertainment in mind. And I know a circuit overseer who would go to Vegas and he'd go with another, uh, an elder. He was a presiding overseer, an elder. And they would go to Vegas, the families, and they would have so much money in uh, slot machine money. They'd have nickels in them days or whatever, and they'd have a whole bag of nickels. You know, they'd cash in 50 bucks worth of nickels. And then they'd have, uh, you know, so much. So today, you know, maybe it'd be $200 worth. You'd have $200 worth of entertainment. Maybe you'd normally go to a show. That'd all be okay with everyone. But you're going to take your $200 and you're going to play the slots and maybe play a few card tables. And once you're out of your 200 bucks, that's it. That's your entertainment for the night. And then you had fun all night and uh, it would be okay. Now, you'd have to keep that quite quiet. Something you can't advertise, but it's allowed. It's allowed in the elders book as long as you keep it quiet. It says uh, uh, the elders will not involve themselves in what you do. Now, I was surprised to find out it was an elder and a temporary secret circuit overseer here in Canada um, going down to <laughs> Vegas once a year and gambling. No one knew about it up here. You know, they were unknown down there in a big city. So there was no notor notoriety. No one knew about it. So uh, elders, they don't get involved. They won't get involved regarding petty gambling solely it's right here solely for entertainment so there's your words so all of you guys that get together and want to play uh, black uh, cards what do they call that uh, um, you know uh, poker you know you guys call it poker um, there's some other names but anyways everyone that gets together plays cards uh, for money maybe you throw in 20 bucks everyone's playing poker all the guys are playing poker it's entertainment it's a whole evening you know the girls are all visiting it's okay guys you're not gambling. You're gambling. Someone's going to come home with a hundred bucks, you know, five guys or whatever is gambling. But uh, it's not gambling. It's not to get rich. It's right here in the Elder's Book. You guys are reading it for yourselves right here. So, however, it says if such petty gambling affects a person's spirituality or becomes a cause of stumbling for others, 
counsel should be giving. So there's your key. Make sure whoever you're inviting over to, to, to play blackjack or to play cards with you um, is reputable. You can trust them. They're not some narc that's just going to make a big deal about gambling. Like, uh, make sure they understand it's in the elders book. It's right here. He's going to look like the stupid one if he, if he narcs on you because he went over for entertainment and that's the deal. So um, there's going to be no counsel given if no one stumbled. It says, however, if such petty gambling affects uh, others, stumbles them, you could say this actually builds stronger congregations. It pulls families together Friday nights. No one's going to the bar. No one's getting, okay, we can get drunk. I'm going to show you that in the next one. But uh, first of all, we're, we're getting together. No one's at risk on the highways. No one's in bars. We're all at a brother's house and we're just having some fun. It's entertainment. It's right here in the elders book. It's allowed now, 2023. Okay, so if he does not respond favorably, then you, yeah. So if it gets out and uh, someone pretends to be stumbled, um, that's because you invited or someone, you run around the congregation talking about it. Just You just start to do your own thing. But the elders aren't going to do anything. They have no reason to hunt you down for doing this. It's in their elders book. Now, if an individual's gambling reveals a course of greediness, it's always about greediness, perhaps causing harm to himself or others, or he ignores repeated counsel, then action would be taken. Like, uh, what are you going to start? You have such a gambling thing every Friday night, you lose 20 bucks? No. You lose more than 20 bucks if you go to the movie. You lose 50 bucks. So uh, that's a, a fun way of uh, having some petty gambling. Maybe once a year you, you slip down to Vegas. No one knows. Maybe you have a 200, you know, every night in Vegas when I would go with the family, you're going to spend more than 200 bucks. So take that 200 bucks or whatever and everyone go and play the slots. It's allowed. It's allowed. You keep it quiet. You don't advertise it. So that's all I have to say on gambling. Let's go back to the studio. Let's see what the next topic is. Drunkardness. Everyone's favorite. Everyone likes to get drunk every once in a while. We're going to show you that it's actually okay. Yeah, so here it is. Okay, everyone's favorite. Well, let's uh, get right into it. Uh, back in 1991, drunkardness right here. You're going to end up in a judicial meeting. Whatever the case is, you're drunk. Uh, someone, uh, you know, your wife uh, talks to the elders. Uh, yeah, my husband was drunk last night. You're going to be in an elders meeting. Unless you deny it and say she doesn't have a witness. Remember, that was a big thing, two witnesses. So now we get into uh, 2017. There's a little bit more in drunkardness. Point 17, drunkardness. Uh, judicial committee is required when there is a practice of drunkenness. So, you know, your wife phones up and says, yeah, phones an elder and says, uh, yeah, my husband's getting drunk every other night, you know, drinking wine or whatever. He goes to sleep. You know, then you might get an incident she told on you. Um, or a single incident of drunkenness that brings notoriety. So there, there is a lot of neat, lee, there begins to be leeway here. Uh, notoriety, that's when there, someone else knows about it. You know, let's say you go to a bar, you go to a public place and you get drunk. And um, someone in the congregation finds out, or you end up on the news. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, you're gonna you're gonna get dealt with, okay? Because it's uh, bringing reproach on Jehovah. It's not that you see Jehovah's okay with a bit of drunkenness, apparently, as uh, long as it's not known. No, no one knows about it. Scriptural description of drunkenness can be found. So they show these, you know, you, you know, people getting drunk in the Bible, I guess. Um, so now here's what it says in number 18. If an individual confesses to an elder that on one occasion he overindulged in alcohol to the point of drunkardness in the privacy of his own home and there was no notoriety, it may suffice for the elder to give strong counsel and in any case the elder should inform the coordinator of the matter. So, so, so now the presiding overseer, the congregation coordinator is involved. Now someone else knows about my drunkardness. So your lesson here is Jehovah's actually okay with drunkardness, uh, according to their elders book, but don't confess it. If an individual confesses to an elder, don't confess it. 
The elders are all getting drunk. They're getting prescriptions for marijuana, you know that, because they have to deal with all the crap. They're either drinking or they're smoking marijuana, one or the other. Number 19, we're, we're going into the newest elder book, 2023. Let's see if they changed uh, their mind on how they're dealing with drunkardness. It says, if an individual confesses to an elder that on one occasion he overindulged in alcohol to the point of drunkardness, in a private setting such as his own home and there is no notoriety, it may suffice for the elder to give strong counsel. In any case, the elders should inform the coordinator of the body of elders of the matter. So they're going to tell on you. So again, uh, 2023, don't confess it on that occasion. You're not going to get disfellowshipped. But uh, the more people that know that uh, you got drunk last night, no one needs to know that. Um, you know, when you, when you get over and you're playing cards, it's easy to have one or two too many playing cards. You know how that goes. And you might have to just stay the night, sleep it off. You see, no one's getting hurt. Everyone's having fun. And no one's going to bars. No one's out on the highways. And that's how you build strong communities. The Elder's Book allows it to a point um, with drunkardness. So uh, the point is you don't go and get, you don't, you know, get drunk a little bit. And then the next day... Your, your conscience, your watchtower conscience says go and tell an elder. It's not asking for that here. You know, these elders get drunk. So they have it like this so you can kind of, it's kind of a, a leeway, you know. Everyone gets drunk every once in a while. Okay, so next point is uh, lying in court. Lying in court. Okay, lying. Lying in court. Let's look at that. Here's the 1991, back in the day. If you were lying, you'd be in an elders meeting. They could bear in false witness, especially, they're saying here. Um, so you couldn't get away with it in 91. 2012, uh, 2017, they changed the rules. 2017, this was after, um, this was after Jeffrey Jackson was in the um, Australian courts, um, the Australian commission, he was lying there. So they had to make change the elders book and allow for a little bit of lying in court. And they did that in 2017. It, it reads pretty much the same. We're going to read it out of the 2023 elders book because it reads the same. And I'm going to pull it up uh, a little closer for you to, to see what it says. It says deliberate malicious lying. Uh, though all lying is bad, judicial action is taken only if there has been a practice of deliberate malicious lying so you can kind of lie tell jokes you can you can kind of get in a habit of lying and, and I remember in a congregation I was in a one of the elders was always joking it was always like joking lying lying joking and I guess maybe the elders book allowed for it so because the 2017 elders book this one this new one allows for it they read the same Malicious means deliberately or harm, harmfully uh, ill will or enmity. Lying that requires judicial action involves more than just exaggeration or petty misleading statements of relatively minor consequence or lying because of momentary pressure or fear of man. See, there's a lot of outs now for lying. You can lie because of pressure or fear of man. You can, you can lie. Uh, lying, uh, um, exaggeration, you know, petty exaggerations. You, you can get away with all that kind of stuff now. The Elder's Book says it. Now, here's what it says. This is interesting. Generally, elders should not consider administering discipline if a Christian charges another Christian with making false statements in a court dispute. So, here's what it says. For example, this may involve divorce, child custody, and support, and so forth. The Christian making the charge can express his concerns to the court that has the responsibility to determine what is truthful when rendering a judgment. So generally, elders should not consider administering discipline uh, if a Christian charges another with making false statements in a court. And that's kind of what it says here, pretty well the same thing. In the 2017 elders book, it says generally elders uh, should not consider administering discipline 
if a Christian charges another Christian with making false statements in a court dispute. And it may example involve divorce and child custody. They're kind of clearer in that elder's book, but they are saying the same thing in this latest elder's book as well. So if you go to court and you have to stretch the truth or not tell the truth or something, and you're a Jehovah's Witness and you want to gain child custody of the kids because their lives are at stake, well, elders are going to read between the lines and say that's theocratic warfare. That's what we call it. And they do lie in court, and we've had other articles on that. It's right here in the elders' book. They're, they can lie in court, and they're making it okay. So uh, there you have that one. What's the next one? Okay, the last one is Christmas gifts. So let's see what, uh, what they say about gifts. Okay, well, they don't really call it gifts, uh, but they call it, it's the same thing. I'll show you what they call it. They call it, well, in the 1991 um, elders book, it would be classified under gambling, extortion, or greed. Gifts, they, they don't really talk about it like that. Now, over here, they get into it. If a business, give, this is the 20, 2017 elders book. Uh, let me see if I can pull that in closer. If a business gives out prizes or prize money to winners of a contest or a potential customer for advertising, accepting the gift is an individual's decision to make. However, a person needs to be careful that accepting such a prize does not stir up greed. So it's all about greed, but there's nothing wrong with winning a prize. So you can put your name in for all the prizes you want. You know, even sometimes you can get lot free lottery tickets at gas stations. So if you buy gas there, they give you a lottery ticket. You can actually have that lottery ticket. It's a prize and it's under uh, section 32. It's the same in the newest elders book. But I want to read this other section here. It says, the elders do well not to involve themselves in what individuals do with regard to petty gambling solely for entertainment. So, so they have the same stance on that today. The elders should not involve themselves in what individuals do with regard to petty gambling solely for entertainment. So there's the reason, there's the, the criteria, solely for entertainment. You know, normally we would spend $200 at Vegas a night to go out, out to shows. Uh, instead, we just it was spent an evening gambling. Or maybe you did one evening gambling and then you went to shows the next evening. You know, you, you, if, if you got questioned, you would have that in your agenda. You'd show that this is just part of your entertainment. And they cannot do a damn thing about it. It's in their elders book. So um, this is interesting. Well, here's the 2023 one. It says, if a business gives out a prize or prize money to win winners of a contest or potential customers for advertising, accepting the gift is an individual's decision to make. However, if a person needs to be careful that accepting such a prize does not stir up greed. So, um, so here's how you do it. Uh, and this is what happens in uh, many uh, Christmas gifts. So the, this is the time of year that corporations and companies are giving out Christmas gifts. So what did the Jehovah's Witnesses get? They go to their employees and they, their employer, or they leave in the, uh, there, there's always a, one of those little boxes that they have in offices that you just leave in your recommendations anonymously. And you put in there, uh, we would like our uh, gift to be a year-end gift. You know, so now it's like a prize. It's a year-end gift, uh, no, no longer a Christmas gift. Um, or, or maybe you could make it like a prize, uh, you know, Watchtower wants it to be like prize. Okay, if you, here's the contest. If you show up in an hour, you win the prize, you get the gift. That's how easy this can be, folks. This does not have to be a Christmas gift. The, it can be a year-end gift, and that's, in fact, how we used to do it in our company. We'd give all our employees, we had Mormons, we had Jehovah's Witnesses, we had worldly people that worked for us. Everyone got a year-end gift. Uh, some, uh, most of the, like the worldly, the Mormons, they, they look at it as Christmas gifts. The JWs looked at it as a year-end gift. So you can do that with anything. You could do that with your birthday. On your birthday, we have a prize. Uh, within an hour, show up and you get your gift. You see, just make all the gift giving a prize, a contest. 
and to the winner that wins. And that's what it says in number 33. This is your this is your book here. And this shows you how you can help. You, you, you can enjoy the happiness in giving and your kids can enjoy the receiving. Isn't that a nice thing to do? And it's, it's all okay. It's all in the elders book. So that's all we have for you today. That's all of the, the extra things that are allowed in the 2023 elders book. The big one I thought was smoking marijuana. And they really, you can even grow it. So uh, I guess it's okay, Jehovah. <laughs> it's 2023. <laughs> okay, folks, until next time, keep living your life with love. Bye for now. Thank you.